Let's talk about looping repetitive tasks in R. Suppose there's some task that I need to do 10 times. I'll store that number in this object n. We can loop over these repetitive tasks with a for loop. So I'm going to start my for loop by typing in 4 and then some index. Lowercase i is a popular one. For i in 1 through n and then some curly braces. Whatever is inside of these curly braces is going to be repeated n times. The way a for loop works is it starts by setting your index to this first number that you give it. So in my case, I will be set to 1 to begin with. And then whatever is inside of here will be executed. And the for loop will then cycle back to the beginning of the for loop and increment i. So for me, I will start at 1, and then it will be set to 2, 3, 4, all the way through 10. Let's start simply by just printing i. So what I'm expecting here is that r will first print 1, then print 2, all the way to 10. And that's exactly what we get. Let's make things a little more interesting. Instead of just printing i, maybe we want to print i plus i squared. Okay, and most of the time we're not simply printing output inside of for loops. We're actually storing these values. So I'm going to have n values. Whatever result that I store needs to have length n. So maybe a vector with 10 elements. I'm going to initialize that vector before my for loop. I'll call it res for result. And for now, I want this to be 10 NAs. So I can repeat NA 10 times. Inside of these curly braces, instead of printing, now I'm actually going to be storing this result inside of res. So I'll type in res, and then I have to index by i gets that result. So first i will be 1, and I'll store this result in the first element of res. And then I'll store this result in the second element of res, and so on. Let's take a look. Here we can see that we get exactly the same output as before, except now we've actually stored this result instead of simply printing to the console.